This is three questions with my friend Jennifer Casa Todd. <laughs> See, I got everything. Jennifer, it's awesome to see you. And for those people who don't know Jennifer, we go back a long time when you actually used to have a BlackBerry. Like that's <laughs> you how always bring that up. Always that's how long that that's how long we've known each other. You actually had a yeah. BlackBerry, right? So yeah. if, if for those who are listening right now, Jennifer has been on the podcast before, but I really wanted her to do um, the three questions podcast, and she is uh, a phenomenal educator. She's also an author. She's written several books, but I'm impartial to your book, Social Media. And anyone that um, is interested, the link is actually in uh, the description down below. And I was lucky enough to write the forward for it. And I, I think it's such a powerful book, and I think more so than ever. Before we even get to the three questions, can you just tell a little bit about Social Media? Sure, absolutely. I'll, and I'll introduce myself. So I'm a teacher librarian and social media is a passion project uh, that George wrote the foreword for. It, it, it basically celebrates uh, awesome kids and teachers who are using social media in positive ways to make the world a better place. And so it's moving, citizen, moving students beyond digital citizenship to digital leadership. Um, and uh, it feels like it's more relevant today than mm -hmm. ever because who would have known that our lives would be completely online? Um, I'm actually, I also co-authored a children's book, Aubrey Bright in Stories That Connect Us, also along the same ideas, the power of technology to connect us without saying what you can't do, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely what happens in social media. And I think within the next week, uh, Raising Digital Leaders comes out, and I'm so grateful to you for having read that and written a testimonial for that well, as well. Yeah, and so the thing that I love about the book is that, um, so I actually get people ask me about a lot of stuff that's, uh, you know, relevant to your work, and I always send them your way and say, like, hey, read this book, because it's really powerful in the sense that you, it's not just theoretical. You're like, hey, here's some ideas, but here's a kid who actually does this stuff. And you, you have so many like student vignettes, um, you highlight students all the time. And so if you have not read uh, social media, if you, if you've never heard of it, I think it's just, it's not just a great book for teachers, but you know, it's great to share those stories with your students because I think it's really pointing on what the, like, I always say this to people, like we've always talked about cyberbullying, and, and like, what's the best, like we focus on that all the time. And I'm not saying don't address it, but what's the best that's going to happen out of that is like, hey, please don't be horrible people. Like, well, like that's, that's a pretty low bar, right? And it's like, hey, we're like saying, like, let's set the bar really high. So if you haven't checked out social media, I highly encourage you to do so. But let's get to the three questions, uh, Jennifer. Um, I know that we've had so many great conversations uh, about education over our time. You know, the many, the many, like we must've known each other for at least 20 years because like, that's how old Blackberry is. That that's how old Blackberry is, right? <laughs> well, at least, you, you know, you didn't have like a razor, like one of those like flip. I actually had that too, right? So I'm just teasing you. So I, just for everyone, I, I got you the iPhone. So there you go. I'm just teasing you. Okay, so there, yeah, you have it. So for those who are watching, shout out iPhone if you want to sponsor us. So just give me a heads up, Apple, at Apple. Anyways, um, when you think of back of your, you know, your career, um, and you maybe think back as a student, like who is a teacher that inspired you and why? So I've, I've had a really tricky relationship with teachers because I actually had a teacher when I was in elementary school pretty much say that I wouldn't amount to anything. <laughs> and um, because English was my second language and they thought I had lots of different issues anyway. And my parents didn't speak English, so they couldn't even talk to them. So it wasn't until grade 11 that I really met a teacher that believed in me, that inspired me. Um, his name is Jim Stewart. He retired, so we're Facebook friends. Um, and I think what was so significant about his impact is here's a, a you know a young italian girl who has a really strict curfew and he opened up the world of books to me mm -hmm. and that in and of itself was incredible i was able to escape my reality and read these books um, but also he was passionate about his subject and encouraging like his feedback was always so good he was continuing to be a mentor to me like i followed him around like mm -hmm. a little puppy dog to different uh different schools and so I think those were the two qualities. He was passionate about his subject, but he was also very supportive and encouraging and open up 
opened up a world to me I never thought existed. I never thought of even being a teacher before I mm -hmm. met him. And so the end of grade 11, I'm like, I think I want to do this. I want to be a teacher. When's the last time you talked to him? Um, probably last summer. Oh, really? You still connect with them? Yeah, yeah. We're still on Facebook quite a bit. That's pretty cool. I actually, like, I posted a picture of myself, like, kind of my health journey today. My kindergarten teacher actually responded to it, which was so cool, right? So oh, still, still that. cheering me on. Mrs. Stock. Shout out Mrs. Stock and Mr. Stewart. <laughs> so they, uh, what, what I, um... What I love about this too, I think, uh, when, when you have a passion for what you teach, uh, that really kind of sticks with people. And I say that because, you know, most people, they don't go into education, think, Hey, just let me teach whatever they, you know, they want to teach specific subjects. So I think I, I'm not saying this more for teachers, but I think a lot of times administrators say like, Hey, I know we hired you for this, but we're going to get you to do this. And it's like the more, <laughs> so the more opportunities that we can actually, you know, put educators in those spaces. Like I remember actually a phys ed teacher um, we worked with, uh, he was moved and they thought, hey, we went to this conference and uh, we saw that you shouldn't be teaching phys ed all day. And so like, it was like half a day he was super happy and half the day he was miserable. And like, that was something we inherited. And, and it wasn't like, and I appreciate that we were trying something new, trying to, you know, to do what's best for kids, but we're like, hey, he, and we're like, do you want to just do phys ed all the time? He's like, please, like that. And, and just like his whole demeanor, because I think, and, and then I watch him get kids really excited about sports, really excited about this. And like, why wouldn't we want that? So just shout out to, you know, to Mr. Stewart uh, for doing that. And I wonder, like, did he say anything about you writing books? Like you got you into reading books, right? Like, has he, has he ever said anything about you writing them? Um, well, I was so scared to give him social media, actually, I really? was like, oh, because he was such a grammarian. Too. <laughs> um, and, and he did, he encouraged my writing right. as well. And I always thought that I would be the great Canadian novelist. I never thought uh -huh. I'd go into educator nonfiction, but, um, yeah, so I did share it with him and he's, he said he was super proud of me, which made me just That's awesome. feel amazing. That's awesome. And, and, and so the next question. And I got to meet uh, several of your administrators. I remember years ago, that was one of our first interactions. I think I was working with uh, your, your principals uh, the one day and like a lot of your leadership team. And so I know you have actually access to really incredible administrators um, all over the world. When you look at some of the administrators that you've either connected with as a student, maybe that you've worked with, like who sticks out to you and why? So that's a really tough one because as you said, I have worked with mm -hmm. some really great administrators, but I have to, I have to say, I was thinking about this, Richard Maurice, um, just such a gentle soul. And there was something about him every time he encountered a student or, or a teacher, even he would put out his hand and say, hello, and say them mm -hmm. by, like, say their name and shake their hands. And I remember when we had a, the graduate, he retired and the graduating class got a picture of him shaking someone's hand. And then every kid in the class, in the uh, graduating class, the grade 12, so 300 of them signed that picture. And That's to amazing. me, it was such a testament to how he built relationships with people, how we, he, he thought that they were a priority. For me, as I was working at a, as the literacy consultant prior and he hired me to come to his school, I remember feeling trusted, you know, like he knew that I was a professional and he would say, you know, he would involve me as a teacher librarian. There are some teacher librarians who don't really ever feel like they're leaders in schools. And I've been very lucky to mm -hmm. have principals who recognize my leadership role. And he basically, you know, any kind of PD or anything, he would always ask my opinion. I just felt trusted and supported. And I felt like he put relationships above all else. And I know that's your thing too. So well, I, I, if you met him, you would love him. Too. And, and that actually, like, it's interesting because like, you know, the, the podcast is called the Innovators Mindset Podcast. We talk a lot about relationships, why that's so important. And, you know, having, you know, um, Sorry, was it, I, I heard, uh, what was his name again? Richard Maurice. Right. And I, I, like, I got it mixed up with like, uh, rocket. I don't know why I like got a hockey player in my head. Maurice as soon as Richard? I, yeah. That's what, that's what I was like. Was Maurice. Oh yeah. So it was Maurice Richard. Yeah, very different. <laughs> yeah. So I was like the hockey guy. So when I heard that, but the thing is that when you, when you interact with people that they, they, it's not like they, I, I hate saying this, they make you feel cared about. 
It's they make you feel cared about because you can genuinely feel you are cared about, right? Because there's, because I'm sure there's people that, you know, try to make you feel cared about, but then in the end, they don't actually care. It's just kind of a, a fake thing. Um, but that is where innovation comes out of because then you actually feel more comfortable taking risks, trying different things because you know that you're supported. You know, you have that. Whereas if I'm always nervous around somebody, if I'm always terrified, um, to share ideas because you know, I don't want to get in trouble. Then you kind of just go into your shell. And so that, that is, uh, that, that is amazing. So it's great. And wh when did he retire? When did that happen? Um, I think he retired three years ago. One, two, three. Yeah. Three years ago. And, and that's so, not to say like my current principal is great as yeah. well. Um, but there's just, something you just like, about... you just like this person better is what you're saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I forever in my mind is that picture of the handshake and all those signatures. Like I can't, it's just such a symbol of, you know, the mm -hmm. servant leadership and what it, what it's all about. It's all about relationships. Oh yeah. There you go. Macho man. There you go. Okay. So last one. So you and I have had incredible conversations in our time. Most of them would not be allowed to be recorded on the podcast. Cause I push you quite a bit, but I know, you know, and I joke about the, I joke about the Blackberry iPhone thing all the time with you, but this is one of the reasons I, I kind of joke about it is you always are willing to be pushed. You have always grown. You've always taken risks. I've watched you like gone from, uh, you know, basically having no digital presence at some point, putting out a portfolio. I remember sitting with you kind of going through that to now like writing books and being like a leading voice in the world in education on this topic. And so you have grown tremendously just in the time that I've known you. Um, and that that's, you know, that's not been, it's been less than a decade for sure. And I actually think, remember our first interaction, you, we talked at a conference that I was speaking at and you came and talked to me after too. Right. And I know you are just like a, a voracious learner and, and maybe that's due to the, the teacher that you mentioned before. But when you look back at your career, if you could start at the beginning, and talk to yourself, what advice would you give to yourself, um, you know, at the first beginning of, all, of your career? First of all, thank you for your kind words. I definitely yeah. appreciate it. Uh, I, am a I only say things that are true, Jennifer. You know that about me, whether you like them or not. <laughs> so um, I was one of the, so again, I was inspired by someone who was very passionate about mm -hmm. the subject area. And I went in and like, you know, Macbeth, we did the the banquet and for the great Gatsby we did a jive right and I taught everyone the jive and we had a 20s party and then the secret life of bees and I was in a beekeeper universe so in uniform so like I brought that passion mm -hmm. I think that was definitely a strength but I think with that came this idea that my content was the most important thing mm -hmm. and that was a mistake um, I certainly, I would say it's been quite a few years now where I've had that revelation, but it was content before kids. Mm -hmm. It really was. And as, as I think so many students appreciated my passion and got inspired by the content, but then there were other kids who I know, you know, had stuff going mm -hmm. on. And I was that, you know, no, English comes first. Right. And what do you mean you didn't do that? And so I would say if there was one thing I, I would change, it was rec recognizing much earlier on that it's my students, the whole child that I need to teach and that, that the passion and the literature and the content knowledge maybe needed to happen at the same time or maybe it was not as important mm -hmm. as I thought it was. Well, and see, and that's like, that's the misconception, you know, we, we've, most of people listening to this are in education. They probably heard someone say, or maybe given the advice, like, Hey, like, don't be nice to kids for like six months or blah, 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 you know, at the beginning of your career. And, you know, I, I don't know where that, I, I'm just curious, like who, who started like, that don't idea? Don't smile till Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Who, don't smile till Christmas. That? Who says that? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm always curious about that. And I think that it's a lot of people kind of think that's like a fluffy thing and going back to your, your administrator. The reality is if you actually take care of your kids, if they know they're cared about, then the same way that your administrator, then they're willing to go further. Then they're willing to be more interested in your content. Um, I, I think about like some of the subjects I hated the most and then interacted with a teacher that I felt cared about. And all of a sudden I got an interest. All of a sudden I cared more about it. Didn't mean I did better. That's for sure. But I, I, you know, was like, Hey, like I'm not like this person. I, I really care about them and they make me feel cared about. I'm actually more interested in that content. And I know, like, I remember, uh, as much as I talk about relationships, I was very, at the beginning of my career, like, Hey, you will adjust to me. 
not the other way around. Right. And that, that was like maybe kind of ingrained to me of some of my experiences in school and, you know, kind of like, you know, going from a little bit old school, uh, background, but really how important it is to like adjust your kids, know them. And what I will say about you, Jennifer, is I've seen you for years. You are one of the biggest advocates for kids. And, uh, I, I actually am a little shocked. That was the advice that you'd give because I would have never pictured you that because I've only seen you advocate for kids. I've only seen you, uh, do everything, uh, you know, even sometimes at, you know, maybe at your own, uh, the sake of, um, your own well being, to be honest with you, which we, we've talked about quite a bit, but you just, oh, I feel your passion for kids is one of the reasons that I care about you so much and think you're just a wonderful person. So, um, I'm really excited to have you on today. I'm glad that you took this time with me and the, I know you enjoyed all the conversation that we had before, cause that's always your favorite, but Hey, everyone, if you don't know Jennifer Casa Todd, make sure you connect with her on social media, check out her book, social media, Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, George. Always a pleasure. Have a wonderful day, everybody.